First of all, I just want to say it's a, it's a very big Kiddush Hashem that you know, it's, the, it's the last day of, of the Zman, of a long Zman, six months, as long as it could get. And uh, over here it's as if uh, we're just going regular. Not, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing different. Moving forward, okay, a few siyumim that we're celebrating, but uh, it's moving forward like regular. It's, uh, I know a lot of the people in this room don't appreciate how novel that is, but the, the fact that the things are strong today, the whole bunch of people still in a, in a, in a, in a big shear going on, it's, it's a tremendous, tremendous Kiddush Hashem. Everyone should realize and appreciate um, what they've accomplished and the fact that they're still on fire and still going strong all the way at the end uh, is a big um, testimony to, uh, to who you are in uh, a, big, a big Yasha Koach. Um, I want to share a, a story that I've said over many times, but I realized I, I got the amounts of money wrong in the story, so I'm, I'm going to correct myself over here. But this is, this is one of those stories that you hopefully keep in your pocket forever. And if just in case you want to read it inside yourself, you look at the Art Scroll biography of Rav Nassim Svi Finkel, the great Rosh Yeshiva of the Mir Yeshiva, Zechat Tzadik page 261. Okay, here it goes. The biggest year in the entire world is given by Rav Asher Arieli in the Mir Yeshiva. Over a thousand people are in the shir. They don't fit into one room. Some people have to live it, listen to it live on the, on the radio. It's the biggest year in the world. At the beginning of the year, at the beginning of the Zman, he makes a request. He says he, one request that he has is that everyone should stay till the end of the Zman. Don't leave early. Okay. So there's a boy named Ephraim, learning in the Mir Yeshiva, whose father booked his flight going home for Pesach. Well, it doesn't say Pesach, for, 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 the, for the break. Um, and the flight, because of the way it was booked, required him to leave in the afternoon on the last day. So it'd be like, you know, sometime this afternoon you'd have to leave. So what's the big deal? The big deal is that Rav Asher Arieli gives shear at the end of second Seder. Meaning his morning Seder, the shear is at the end of second Seder. So this would mean that he'd have to miss the, the Seder, second Seder, and he'd also miss the shear. Now, big deal, you know, saying like, okay, sometimes you make a mistake on the bookings of a flight, we try not to do that, but so he misses the last couple hours, one shear. You know, people could always get recordings. Maybe could even see it live nowadays. Who knows? Okay, what, what's the big deal? But he felt uncomfortable because Rav Usher had asked in the beginning of the year, everyone should stay at the end of this month. Okay, so he's an honest student. He goes to his Rebbe and says, what should I do? So Rav Usher really said, you should go ask the Rosh Yeshiva. You should go ask Rav Nassim Svifinkel. So he, he, Ephraim walks into, uh, he, I'm sorry, it, 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 beforehand, Ephraim had asked his father what he should do. And his father said, go, go ask Rav Asher Yehili. Rav Asher Yehili told him to go to, to the Rav Nassim Svi. Okay. So Ephraim, so Ephraim went to Rav Nassim Svi Finkel, and the Shashiva thought about it for a few minutes, and he said, I think you should stay. That would mean that the ticket, for the ticket to be sh shifted, which the father was willing to, to, to switch, was $400. I used to think it was $250. I looked it up today, $400. $400 to switch the ticket. The father said he's willing to do it. Rosh Yeshiva said, I think you should stay. Okay, Ephraim accepted uh, the decision, and, and he walked out, and as he's walking out the door, Rav Nassim Tzvi calls him back, and he says, look, and I quote, I know that $400 is quite a sum, since I'm the one who wants you to stay, it's my business, not yours. The Shiva then reached into his pocket, counted out $400, and handed the money to Ephraim. And Ephraim didn't want to take the money. Take the Shiva the mere $400 out of his own pocket. It's wild. So he wouldn't take it. The Shiva wouldn't hear of it, nothing. And he wanted to make a point that every minute of learning is important, and it's worth it for him to go ahead and give that money. An amazing, amazing story. And look, all of you did it for free here. It didn't, uh, didn't, didn't cost us a penny. Okay? It's a, an amazing, an amazing thing. What you've accomplished, you don't appreciate it. It's tremendous, a, a really a tremendous thing. And it shows the importance of time, of every, every single minute. In fact, you know, some people here quote 
the next period that we're about to walk into, Bein Hazman. Okay, don't say that anymore, okay? Let's delete that from our vocabulary. If anything, say Bein Hazmanim. That's the way it's said on the street. But, Bein Hazmanim is a bad word. Why? Let's translate it. Let's go to Opan and let's translate Bein Hazmanim. Bein means in between, and Hazmanim means in between the times. What does that mean? That means that today, on Thursday, we're in a time. On the first day of ER, when we come back after Pesach, when we come back to Yeshiva, we're in a time. And we're about to enter in between times. It's not time. What is it? It's nothing. No time land. Okay? That's crazy. What do you mean? Tomorrow's not a time? The day after that's not a time? And every day we're supposed to look at is the beginning of the rest of our lives. Like every day we can milk, we can um, gain so much from. It's not the, uh, it's not Bein Asmanim. It's not Bein Asmanim. Right? So, I'll tell you that the, one of the greatest Rosh Yeshivas ever was Rav Shach. Rav Shach was the Rosh Yeshiva of the Panovich Yeshiva. Okay? He has a sefer called Avi Ezri. On the Rambam. So in the sefer Avi Ezri, at the introduction to the volume on Zeroyim, which is about the agricultural halachos of Eretz Yisrael, Avoda, Karbono Sentara, all the inner workings of the Beis HaMikdash, things that no one learns in yeshiva. That's not the, that's not the norm. Okay? That's, we, we don't learn that in the, in the classical yeshivas. They don't learn Kachim. They don't learn about Karbanos. They don't learn about the Beis HaMikdash. We learn Baba Metzia, we learn Megillah, right? So in the introduction to this volume, which he wrote, but he was Rashi, the yeshiva that learned the standard Masechtas, like, like we do over here. So he writes, how did he have time to write this book? This isn't what they learn in the yeshiva. And he's busy all the time learning the other Masechtas that they learn in the yeshiva in Panovich. So when did he have time? So he writes, I'm too busy learning all the time the things that we teach in the yeshiva. Virak, here are the two words, bizmane habenayim. He doesn't call it bein azmanim. It's the zmane, it's the times that are in between other times. That's the period that we're about to walk into. It's not a timeout. It's not a break. It's a time. It's the zman between other times. And if we look at it like that, it shifts everything that we're about to embark on. We are about to embark on an opportunity. It's a time, a period that we could grow, we could develop. Resting helps us grow and helps us develop. Visiting friends, family, maybe certain trips that we didn't have a chance, maybe learning certain topics that we didn't have a chance on to, to learn throughout the, throughout the year. It's an opportunity to milk the time that we're about to enter into. So how do we do it, and how do we make it successful? So there's a Gemara in, uh, in Brachos, and that's Samach Hamad Beis. The Gemara is discussing the Brachos that we recite every single morning. At every stage of waking up, you're supposed to make a Bracha. Now we recite it all together in, in, in the evening in the morning, in Shul, but back in the day, as they would straighten up, they'd make a Bracha, as they'd go here, they'd make a Bracha, etc., 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 okay. The first bracha of the morning, the Gemara says, is Elokai Neshama. It's the bracha that we say that Hashem has returned to us our soul. Very beautiful bracha. But there's a problem with this bracha. What's the problem? There's a rule. Every bracha has to start with the word Baruch. Easy rule. But this bracha is the first thing. The Gemara says, when you wake up in the morning, you say, Elokai neshama shenasata bi tahorehi, etc. There's no baruch in the beginning of that bracha. So where is the baruch? That's the ABCs of brachas. You've got to start with the word baruch, and there's no baruch here. So what's up? So the Tosa Sarash quotes, and the Me'iri over there, they quote a Ravid, that the Ravid says the following answer. You see, for example, in, in benching, or in Shmon Esrei, we start off with the word Baruch. But then the subsequent brachos that we say in that list of brachos don't start with the word Baruch. Right? Atah kadosh, shimcha kadosh. Atah gibor lo'olam Hashem. 
Where's the baruch over there? So the rule is that as long as if you have a string of brachos and the first bracha of the string after a baruch, that works for all the subsequent brachos. Okay, very nice. How's that can help us over here? This is the first bracha of the day. When you wake up, you say, Elokai Shema." Says the Raivin that the baruch that you said before you went to sleep in the bracha of Hamapil Chavlei Shina, that baruch is the connecting bracha in the string of brachos that Elokai Shema follows. And in fact... When the Gemara is talking about the list of brachos he's supposed to say in the morning, guess what it starts with? Hanichnas lishon. Someone is about to enter to go to sleep. He should say the bracha ma'pil chavlei shena. And then bracha number two. When he wakes up, he says elokai neshama. And then bracha number three, etc., etc., etc. The Mishnah Brura in Simon Memvav, Sifka and Yadalid, is talking about how many brachos is supposed to make a day? 100 brachos. Ideally, he's supposed to make 100 brachos a day. So he starts to count. Like, where are you going to get your 100 brachos a day? So he starts to count. And he says, the first thing that he counts is the brach of ma'pil chavleshen, the brach that you make before you go to sleep. Which makes absolutely no sense. Because if you're going to start the count of 100 brachos from last night, so first you dive in mariv, right? So you should count the brachos of mariv. If you're going to count it from the morning, so count it from the brachas in the morning. And he counts it from Amapil Chavlei Shena. Because that really is the beginning of the morning. Now, what does that mean? So, as we all can attest to, there's a fundamental difference to our abilities to succeed day in and day out if the night before we know what we're supposed to be doing the next morning. If in the morning we wake up, whether it's with an alarm clock or not, and then all we start, start to think, what am I doing today? Eh, I could start that in an hour from now maybe. Maybe a few more hours, I'm very tired. The ability to succeed is way lower than if before you go to sleep, you know, I have to get up tomorrow morning at this time, this is what I have to accomplish, this is how fast I have to do it, this is what I have to do in order to get up, I have to set my alarm, I have to get someone to wake me up, etc. When a person plans the night before, his success the next day, his ability to milk the time of the morning, that powerful first moments of the day when we're fresh, and we're thinking differently, is a whole different level. A whole different level. And that's the Yisod over here, the idea that Hamapil, the bracha that we make before we go to sleep, is really the kickoff to our next day. It's the key to our success when we're able to think before we go to sleep what, what the plan is, what's the, what are we going to try to accomplish tomorrow. It's a whole different ball game. So the same thing is today. Today, yes, is the last day of the winter's man. If we could take a moment, just like we do, we're supposed to do at night, and literally write down Okay, not just like a small Kabbalah, which I understand we're, we're, we're all encouraging everyone to do that, okay? But actually write down, what are my goals? What do I want to accomplish over the next three, four weeks? What do I want to accomplish? I want to be able to have good Dvar Torahs to say at the Seder night. I want to be able to go on a good hike. I want to be able to meet up with some friends. Literally make a list of all the things that we want to accomplish. I need to go shopping, whatever it is. Make a list right now, today, today. Make a list of what we want to accomplish tomorrow. Tomorrow's a day, so, okay? What do I want to accomplish tomorrow? What's my plan for waking up? What's my plan for going for Shabbos? Get my, my details down. What do I want to do for Shabbos? What do I want to do afterwards? We all have calendars for the next few weeks. Let's get it down. Write down the things you want to accomplish and shift our mindset from like, okay, I'm just going to detox to, I'm going to accomplish. I might accomplish differently. I might use the time, the zman habinaim, the time in between times, to accomplish a lot of things. And then Be'ez Hashem will all see tremendous success. We'll have a super, super successful zman habinaim. And then we'll enter into the next zman, all charged up because we accomplished so much. Instead of coming off, oh, oh gosh, I was, that was rough. Why, why, why should it be rough? It should be better than ever. So my bracha to all of us is that we spend time today. It could be 15 minutes. It might take you a couple hours. But sit down today and plan things that we want to accomplish over the next short time so that we all can reap the benefits 
of the incredible time that's about to come into our lives.